Hello everyone and welcome back to another Trenton World 4 video. We are on the Island Line 2022. Uh, so we naturally have the class 484, the old XD uh, stock trains on, on the underground. Uh, right Shanklin, let's pop in and we're going to be heading up to Ride Pier Head. Um, so safety systems. Again, I wish there was just a way we could have them all on by default. That would save what? 10 seconds or so, or 5-10 five, five, seconds of trying to get them all on. Uh, I see they still haven't done that. I press in I on my keyboard, doesn't do the instrument lights. Um, that goes in, set that to neutral, uh, and we'll also put the lights on. Cool. Right, I think we are ready to go. There's not really much else to do on this one. Get the door shut, uh, headlights, before we forget them. Um, interesting, we're not stopping at Smallbrook Junction, that's fine by me. And let's get going. There we go, slowly jolts forward. Yeah, Island Line 2022, the better version of the Island Line. The old 2021 is just rubbish. Well, not rubbish, but it's just not great. There we are, look at that. Do a little brake test as well. Yeah, they are definitely working. And let's get the speed up. The acceleration is just amazing on this train. Maybe too good? <laughs> It's very good. Although braking is a bit is another story. The brakes on this train are mm, undesirable. Cool. Yeah, this is a Rivet Games route. This one, uh, probably one of Rivet's, still one of their best routes. Um, as it's very detailed. Lots of nice little thing. It's just a, it's genuinely a good route, and it's the full package as well. 484, right and uh, right pier head to Shanklin. That's the full island line in real life. It's at a low price as well. I think this is fourteen pound ninety nine. Uh, it's generally a good product. It's a good um, good DLC, good train. It's all round decent. Remember, we did a um, comparison video actually between the real Isle of Wight and. Um, this DLC sort of when it first came out and it was pretty spot on. It's weird to think that this route is coming up to two years old. It's just like how? I, I don't that time is going so quick. Um it's just crazy. I mean think as I'm recording this video it's sort of early March. It's gonna be four years since lockdown soon. Four years, it's just like that can't be right. <laughs> Why is time going so quick? Yeah, so I went to the Isle of Wight almost two years ago. This DLC almost two years ago. It's just, um, yeah, it's just like, how? How is it going so quick? Maybe it's just me. Is it going slow for you guys, or is it going quick? Time's just been sped up somehow. Uh, we have got the SWR liver, which looks fabulous on the 484. Um, from the UI, and uh, for they on from the Creators Club. Sorry, passengers, we will have a short delay here. Uh, because for some reason, uh, the lights are on at the back. Which obviously they shouldn't be. Why on earth are they on? Oh wait, the tail lights. Yeah, there you go, good, that's better. Um, uh, cab door controls, where are they again? Cool, it's a cool train, cool little, cool little Diddy train. Really nice one to drive. Alright, let's get back in, sorry passengers, well actually you're probably quite happy. They can now get on alright. Right, get the door shut.
Right, let's go. Hopefully the audio levels are alright. It's quite a noisy train once it gets going, this one. I'll turn it up just a little bit. Hopefully that won't be too much. Oh, not that. There we go, we're on our way. Sandown's up next, which isn't too far away. The thing is, with this train, though, you can't hear when you're putting brakes on. It sounds a bit weird, but look. For accelerating, you can sort of hear the click, and then it starts doing it. But for braking, there's nothing. So if you're doing hudless, it's um, you sort of have to keep an eye on the brake. Or uh, keep an eye on the um, power brake controller. You could just easily slip it into um, emergency quite easily. Now approaching sand out. I must admit the brakes aren't great on this train either. I mean, now below sort of 20, but anything above that is like they're non existent. Oh, just in a nick of time, there you go. Oh, we're now coming into sand down. We should be the only train on the line at the moment. So I think there's the there is two. Peak time there's two trains which go backwards and forth. As it's not really peak time anymore, I think that train has uh, gone back to the depot. So it's just us out and about. As I wonder if they will, or maybe they have already. Do, do they run these trains as for two units together? When I went there, it was just two, but yeah, for sort of special occasions, say the Isle of Wight Festival or something like that, will they run two units together? I don't know how many 484s they actually have. Is it about three or so? Sort of two and then sort of a spare. Plenty of couplers to them, that. Uh, right, we already have the green, that's good. Uh, it'll be braiding after this. Yeah, one of Rivet Games' best products, this is, the Isle of Wight. It's cheap. It's the whole thing. Um, it looks good. It runs well. It's, it should run well. Because, um, yeah, we did a comparison video between the real deal and this when it first came out. And it was pretty spot on. It's good. It is good. So a nice little line to have in the game, twice. So you've got the Isle of Wight 2020 with the um, class 483, which is the X1938 tube stock, which is okay at best. Um, but the route scenery and all that is just... Ugh. As this, sort of, this version comes on, completely revitalises and makes it great. And uh, yeah, £14.99 as well, this DLC. Whereas I think the old Isle of Wight is still, is it £20? Or possibly more than that? This is the better version. Right, let's go up to 45, which is the uh, top operating speed of the Isle of Nine. You'd think it, it could be quicker, but it's not. No, they brought all these new shiny new trains in. They kind of get up to 45. And I think it still takes basically the exact amount of time to get from Shanklin to Ryan Pier Head in the 483, which is the old train. I well, think they might put the speed limit up a little bit. But no, in fact, it's actually gone down the speed limit. I think coming into braiding, it's now 15 instead of 20. Photo mode when we go over the pier. I haven't driven this route. I don't. I can't remember the last time I've actually been on this route. I'll have to have a look, but it would have been quite a substantial amount of time ago. Island line. How long ago was it? Wow, June the twenty-second, twenty twenty-three was the last time we were on this route. 
so it has been a little while. <laughs> but that's fine, it's all good. We're back on it now. We had the old fishing lake down there to the right, but I don't think that exists in this uh, version of the uh, of the route. Oh, and also, this was also the first route to have sparks on it. Which actually looked pretty... I, I quite like the sparks on this route. I actually think they are probably better than the... Um, the Dovetail game South Eats and High Speed Sparks. Because the sparks on here look a lot more realistic. Like the third row arc in is really good. Hopefully we can spot it at some point. But the sparks on here are better. It's on the DTG sort of third rail sparks. It's very white, uh, the flash, which realistically, it's it sparks. They're orange, um, so on here it does a really good job of it. Whereas on there it's a bit mm, could be better. They proper splash out as well on here. Come on, give us a spark. I can hear stuff, but I can't see it. This is Braiding Station, which is just a lovely little village station. I know it's like working on this line though, so I mean, you're not really going to be uh, the variety. There's not really much variety. So if you're a guard or a, a driver on this route, it's just going to be the same eight miles every single day for probably, what, eight hours or so. Oh, that's the wrong side to come out. And I think the mastery rewards to get the uh, 483 sitting in the, the old train sitting on the platform, or sitting here. But I haven't got that yet. You can go in the signal box as well, which is a nice little um, addition to it. What are you doing? Oh. Okay. I'll push you out the one, my little drill. Oh, it's gone now. Right. Let's go. Uh, right to John's Road next. Right, we're off. Yeah, Braiding used to be quite a, a slightly more significant station. It used to be a junction station with the line down to oh, is it? I think St Mary's. It's called St Mary's, and it's not Bellingham, is it? Bellingham? No, there's a place called there's, there's a place beginning with B, which um, I, wish, I shall quickly go on Google Maps and have a look. Let's have a look. Benbridge, that's the one. Yeah, Benbridge and like, St Mary's, the line went to. The Isle of Wight used to be full of railways, but uh, nowadays, well, it's just this. Just this little line left over. Right, let's get that. Hopefully they actually extend this line one day down to Ventnor, that would be good. Or Ventnor, I'd say yeah, Ventnor. Which is a few miles south of uh, Shanklin. Which is all a bit cut off. Let's get a little flyby shot as we uh, trot along. No, not that. Yeah, it's just chilled out. 
chilled out route, can't really go wrong. Little sort of 25 minute run either end to the other. Which is a little bit short, but then it's realistic. Like you say, if the line went on another 20 minutes and it was just it was cut, it would be like, oh, why have they done that? But it is this the realistic length of the route? The only thing we don't have on here is the Isle of Wight Steam Railway, which would be quite a nice addition. Maybe they will at some point bring that. So that's what's on the um, Train Sim Classic version, the really old Train Sim Classic version. Where you've got, um, um, yeah, you've got the thingy on there, the Isle of Wight Steam Railway. From Small Brick to Wooten. Wooten. We are soon coming up to Smallbridge Junction. I don't know if I've got dynamic weather. It looks like it's clouding over a little bit and getting foggy. Of course it's getting foggy. It's dynamic weather. I think I did say it's custom weather. But maybe I didn't. Maybe I did put it dynamic weather. Imagining it's getting foggier and cloudier. Right, it comes down to 30. That's after the uh, platform, I believe. Just about to see the steam railway on the left. Oh no, we have got dynamic weather on. I've just noticed the lighting has changed. It'll probably start raining quite soon. Through we go. I wouldn't be surprised if it does it doesn't start raining. I'm trying to see some sparks as well. If we can. See if we can see some gun over the points. So they look really nice on this route. I think the 20 is after the uh, platform. So we're coming up to a ride St John's Road. There we go, see the spark there? And at the back, it looks much better. And much more. Uh, ooh, as it would be in real life. Sort of that orangey instead of literally just really. Why is it? It's so weird the lighting at the moment. It's really bright. Yeah, I know four trains in there. So I suppose you've, you've always got about two just sitting around doing nothing. And also these trains, well not the 484s, I think they're the 230s, they're like battery ones, have recently I believe entered service for Great Western on the um, Thames branches. Here we are, Ryan St John's. Got an emergency phone there. I wonder what voltage the Isle of Wight uh, third rail's at. I mean, I'd assume it's 750 volts. But could it be slightly lower? Could it be 660? Which I think the tube is at. Probably, I suppose it probably is 7. Well, you still you wouldn't want to get near it and touch it. Probably a 750. Quick Google search will wrap that up in a second. Well, it could be lower. Let's have a look. Olive White. Yeah, Olive White. What 
voltage is that? Um, island line voltage. Uh, no, oh, oh, hang on, no, it was it was six hundred and uh, it was six hundred and sixty volts um, when you had the four way freeze running. So that's the old trains, but now it's seven hundred and fifty volts. So it, it was six sixty before, but um, well, now now it's seven fifty like the mainland. Obviously, still you wouldn't want to get near it. <laughs> it's going to give you a bit of a shock if you go near it. Not really slow. As we sort of weave our way into Ride Espl uh, Ride Tunnel and then Ride Esplanade. This is a really a well done route though. Like, there's not really any part of it which looks like, ooh, I don't like the look of that. I mean there's um, a church spire in Ride you can't see, which is quite notable in real life. But um, once we get out of here, it looks fab. You've got the hovercraft there, you've got the ferries. Um, it is generally a really good product. And probably still one of Rivet's best products. I'll say the Benina line is probably really up there as well. Maybe even Benina line and this sort of being Rivet's best um, products. I'm trying to think about what else Rivet have done. It's called more Edinburgh Glasgow. Yeah, I'd say Benina line and this are probably Rivet's best DLCs. The Benina line's beautiful. And here we are, this is Ride Esplanade. And you've got the hovercrafts over there, which is the only, um, I think the only public sort of commercial, uh, commercially used hovercraft service in the world. It's just a really cool place to the fly. Did we get a stop marker at this one? I can't see one, so I would assume not. Oh, that was it. Now we go on to Ride Pier. But I mean, look at that! Isn't that just lovely looking out over there? I mean, you can't see that. Actually, that's probably the only thing. Actually, no, you can. I think. I think you can once you're actually at the pier head. So you can't see the mainland. But then I think you might be able to see it. Or was that on the old version where you can just about see it in the distance? Because so from here you can see Portsmouth really well. Like the Spinnaker Tower. It's quite it's easily visible. It's only about 20, 20 minutes or so on the boat going across. I think like 10 minutes in the hovercraft. So long to close those doors. It's like, come on, close. <laughs> right. On to the pier we go. Which we will try and get a. Uh, a shot on here. It's sort of like one of those primary locations and best places to try and get a, a picture. Especially now we've got photo mode. I mean, photo mode will make it much nicer. And the autofocus will help quite a bit. What's better, that side or that side? So the barrier doesn't really help that side, does it? A bit further back. Hmm. Yeah. Turn up the brightness as well. To so it's really just dark. You can still walk along the pier as well. Maybe you can't see the mainland. Or can you? I don't know. 
I mean, yeah, if that's probably the only gripe, I suppose, is the fact you can't see Portsmouth. Which, even if they sort of did it as... Yeah, it doesn't have, they don't have to model it. Just, even just to spin a Katow, seeing that in the distance. Or the Millennium Tower, I think that's the other name for it. off in the distance. I don't know if you can see the mainland. It's just that sort of hazy. And we do have a stop marker for here. There it is. Which is within this post here. There you go, that was a very nice run, was it not? Oh yeah, I, say, I couldn't hear the objective ping. Uh, that was a very nice run up from uh, Shanklin. <coughs> a successful run. Um, there we go. I don't think we need to uh, do anything with the doors. I think we can just keep them open. Um, but yeah, that is going to be it from me. Hopefully everybody has enjoyed that. That was yeah the Island Line 2022. Uh, which is just a lovely, lovely route. And the SWR livery is on the Creators Club as well. So if you're getting this route, just get that livery. Um, links can be found in the usual places, Discord, PayPal, Merch Store. Apart from that, thanks all for coming in, and hopefully we'll see you next time. See you all. Take care. Bye, guys.